All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabia, I hope you're all good. So today we get to check out a brand new pedal from Origin Effects. Some of you guys may have heard of them before. If you've not, I sincerely recommend you check them out. Uh, one of my favorite pedals that I use all the time with my Strat is the Revival Drive Compact. I just think that it works really well with any amp that I've put it in front of. The Origin Effects stuff is not cheap, so you really are making an investment if you're gonna buy one of their pedals, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, I haven't been disappointed with any of the effect or overdrive tones that I've heard from any of the Origin Effects stuff. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the brand new Revival Drive Compact Hot Rod Edition. Some of you may remember I did the Revival Drive Hot Rod Edition, which is their big form factor version. And it's basically everything you need if you want kind of hot rodded plexi tones, classic rock, uh, 80s shred metal, leady, super top end articulate kind of lead tones. And so basically what we're looking at here is a compact version, which for me personally, I way prefer because it's easier to use, it's a smaller pedal, and it weighs less. Uh, and generally speaking, I prefer the functionality of the compact version. Just before we get stuck into this video, I do need to let you know that this is a paid gear video. I was paid by Origin Effects to check out this pedal, let you guys know what I think. Of course, those are my opinions, my opinions only. So, you know, take from that what you will. But of course, the purpose of this video is to show off the pedal, show you how it sounds. Hopefully you guys dig it. So, the Revival Drive Compact Hot Rod. It's a really beautiful looking pedal. I love the metal work of it. It's a super straightforward pedal in terms of its functionality. You've got an in and an out. You've got a nine volt power supply. Of course, that's how you power the pedal. Uh, and you have a bypass switch up front. We've got a couple of really important controls for tweaking the EQ, because I'll get into the purpose of this particular pedal in a moment. But in terms of the controls along the top, from left to right, we've got output, highs, and gain, and then we've got our uh, wet dry, we've got uh, lows, and we've got our more presence control. Something else I'm gonna point out is that it's absolutely chucking it down outside, so if you do hear any weird background noise, I'm afraid that is the rain against my attic studio windows. So I'm gonna get through this as quick as I can, but this pedal is basically exactly the same as the Revival Drive Compact in terms of its functionality and the way the pedal works. The only difference is the tones itself. This is a hot rodded version, so there's more gain on tap, it's going to give us way more of that sort of articulate, shreddy kind of gain. And I'm, I imagine we'll be able to get a lot of different gain tones out of it. So we'll get onto the rig later on. But anyway, the idea with the Revival Drive is it recreates the entire signal path of a valve amp. And you can plug it into the front of an amp, you can use a preamp, you can run it a couple of different ways, whether that be blending it with a clean, blending it with a crunch, blending it with a preamp. Generally speaking, it's super versatile. So if you if you tried any of the Revival Drive stuff before, um, you'll notice that it can kind of just blend with whatever you put it in front of. I don't know what that is, but anyway. So we know that the Hot Rod Edition is basically more gain. We'll be able to get some really nice lead tones out of this. But the cool thing here, and the most important thing about this pedal and the Revival Drive Compact itself is the post drive EQ. Because you've got a little three-way toggle switch, which allows you, hopefully you can see on the close-up, and we'll do some sweeps. But you've got a three-way toggle to choose between preamp uh, EQ EQ1 and EQ2. So in terms of the EQ curve for preamp, it's matched to work with that. If you go to EQ1, it generally tends to be where I like uh, the setting to be. I tend to get more low end response. You do lose a little bit of the top end, uh, high end response, but you can dial that back in, I've found, with that, either with the amp or with the pedal. And then EQ2, I guess, is for really dark sounding amps that need brightening up. So if you need to get more mids, high mids, and top end presence out of uh, your amp, you can use it in EQ2 position. And then we've got this amazing trim pot, which adjusts all of that, I guess. It adjusts the, re the response, the frequency area that it affects, all the rest of it. I think this is an amazing control, I love it. So I usually have it in EQ1 and I dial it uh, clockwise until I feel that the low end response is quite right and I find it works really well, whatever amp I'm trying to use, uh, whatever guitar or rig or tone I'm trying to use, that trim pot is where it's at. Okay, other than that, you know, you've got your dry and your overdrive blend here, which is really cool. So if you are running a crunch and you don't want to use all of the drive from the pedal, you can you can ride that on this blend knob. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to run it on full, so you're just hearing the drive. Then finally, I think another really important control here is the more presence knob. Now, basically, if you turn it counterclockwise, it affects the negative feedback of the output of the pedal, making things break up quicker. It's a really nice feature. You know, uh, depends what kind of tone and response you want, but I really like that and I'll show you why when we get into it. And then of course, if you turn it clockwise, it just adds, it acts like a classic presence knob of an amp. So it just adds more presence and it really does work. 
So that's the functionality of the Revival Drive Compact Hot Rod Edition. In terms of a rig today, I wanted to experiment with something a bit different. I've got a really lovely set of amps set up for us. Uh, firstly, I wanted to run it into a clean channel, of course. So we're running it into the clean of the VX100 uh, from Victory Amps. That's running into the Torpedo Studio. Uh, but then I've also got an ABY setup, so we're running it into the crunch of the M0 Overdrive from Mesa Barber, which is an absolutely fantastic amp. Uh, that's running out into the Oxbox, so we can flip between the two. Very different uh, amps, very different responses between the two. Uh, Victory is a lot darker than the um, uh, uh, Mesa Barber, and of course, yeah, Mesa Barber's kind of sounds more like a soldano -y kind of amp, it's more that way out in terms of its tone, whereas the Victory is tighter, uh, it's, not as, it's got nowhere near as much fizz at the top end. Both beautiful sounding amps, but they're gonna react very differently. So that's basically the rig. We're gonna try out a bunch of different guitars, so without further ado, let's check out this pedal. All right, let's get stuck in. I figured because it's a hot rod, it's kind of the plexi vibes and all the rest of it, we'll start with the Les Paul. Why not? 71 Les Paul Custom. And let me just show you how the VX100 sounds. I figured we'd base this demo more around a clean tone because you're gonna be mixing this with a clean more likely than a crunch, but we'll do that in a bit. Anyway, this is the sound of the Les Paul straight into the VX100. Here we go. So that's the sound of the clean. Any reverb you hear is coming from the Capital Chambers reverb plugin. I've set everything to 12 o'clock uh, and let's just hear how it sounds. straight away the feel is really good it's it, it ve very much uh, like an origin effects kind of feel with their drives it's like this warm spongy but responsive feel to it <laughs> So that's with everything at 12 o'clock. Now, if we use the more knob, let's check out how that changes things. So if we turn it counterclockwise, you'll hear it probably starts to break up sooner, so. So yeah, it, de it definitely does break up faster, which is really nice if you want even more of that kind of spiky articulation. Uh, and then if we use it in the traditional setting, uh, boosting it is gonna give us more presence. So it doesn't necessarily give us more gain. It feels like going counterclockwise gives you more gain as well, whereas boosting it clockwise, getting more open mid-range, top mid, uh, high mid-range. So this is it in the middle. And then we boost it. Gives it more bite, a bit more edge at the top. And then you could also just use the highs, so. in conjunction with the present snob. Ah, it sounds good. It sounds good, I like it. Uh, so next, you could just boost the gain. Let's 
let's try a different guitar. This is something a little more traditionally shreddy, I guess. This has got the silo humbuckers in, so the higher output, but see what we've got going on. It feels really good for Shred. I'm sorry about that playing, but it's got a liquid vibe to it that I really like. Um, let me quickly show you uh, what the post drive EQ controls do. Power amp mode. Let's not bother with that. And then EQ2. You can hear it boosts the mid, mid range. And I find for my amp, EQ1 works really well. But the uh, trim pot is really great. So the, the further you turn it clock, uh, counterclockwise, the more it gets rid of the low end. It kind of dials in more top end to the amp, but there's somewhere along the way it's not as natural because that amp doesn't have that much. So you want to, for me, I want to find where it gets that like low mid roar like a cab would have. Yeah, it's really good. I like that. Let's try with the present side. So my first impressions straight out the gate is very similar vibe to the Revival Drive Compact, which you'd expect, but like like it says, it's hot rodded, so it's got more gain. The feel of it is, again, similar to the actual hot rod edition uh, version of the Revival Drive, which I've tried, but I, I like this because it's just easy to use. I know where I can dial in, if I need more presence, more breakup, more highs, more lows. It's really easy to use that to change the, the, the EQ response of your amp. And the thing is that it's going to sound different into any amp that you put it in, but you've got such control over the way it reacts with the amp that you kind of don't need to worry. So, you know, like that's why I'm using a, going to use a different amp now to show you how, how completely different it's going to sound with that amp compared to my Victory. So just once again, this is the Victory. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the Mesa Barber. I'm just going to reset the more in presence. I'm going to lower the gain. All right, here we go. So this is the Mesa Barber into the Ox. Obviously there's loads of reverb and ambience on there because I was playing some lead on it earlier. But anyway, check it out.
probably you can hear there's a huge difference now we're going into the M0. Uh, a different kind of amp altogether, whereas we had in the Victory like a smooth, liquid, kind of creamy shred tone. This is more edgy at the top, there's way more presence in this amplifier. <laughs> And you can hear, obviously there's loads of reverb, of course, because I love it, but you can hear um, the way that I'm gunning the gain into this. This is without. Let's throw it on. Oh, it feels great. I'm just playing nonsense because it feels really good, like all notes to bend and... So yeah, I'm loving it really, to be honest with you. I, I can't decide which I prefer, like the sound of it going into a crunch or the sound of it going into a clean. Bearing in mind, um, you know, I could always change the IRs as well that I'm using. If you were he hearing this through a cab, you'd obviously have probably loads more presence in the room just to listen to it. But yeah, I'm digging it. Let me try turn the uh, Kraken onto a crunch channel and see what happens. This is the clean. So, let's throw it on a bit of crunch. So that's the crunch channel of the Kraken. This is the crunch channel of the Mesa. So then back to the victory again. So I've switched back over to the Les Paul, um, and yeah, now I've got the crunch channel on with the with the Kraken. That's the Kraken, and then this is the M Zero. I might actually get rid of a little gain on the Kraken. Right here we go. It sounds really good. <laughs> uh, right, M0. get lost in that for hours just the richness of the chord like the kind of gain tone I mean not 
only is it great for lead, of course, like it's really singing. It really does sound good, but then when you pull, pull, ring out those chords... Ah, it's, it's really good. May as well have a quick blast with the strap because, you know, we're here. to the Mesa, Mesa Barber. Oh, you can hear there's a spank there. So addictive. Okay then, so I've done loads of playing. Hopefully it's been chopped down into a nice bite-sized amount for this video. I think it was a good idea using two very different sounding amps because the Victory is inherently darker than the Mesa Barber and that one's got tons of top end information. So it's nice because I'm the kind of player that sits somewhere in the middle. I don't like loads of top end sizzle and I don't like it to be too dark. So the Victories always sit nicely for me and what I really enjoyed was that I could get like thick high gain uh, nothing too intense in the top end sizzle out of the victory but if I wanted to I could you know do extreme settings like push the presence all the way up and boost the highs to get that bearing in mind this is just with my rig in my studio whereas using the Mesa Barber that had tons more information up there really brought it out and it sounded really fun with the strat there's such a spank on it which I really enjoyed but I think what was cool here was that using a rig like that, two different amps showed off that the pedal can give me lots of satisfying tones, whatever the weather, uh, whatever the amp I'm using. And I think it's also worth saying that it's an addictive pedal to play. The feel of it's super liquid and lovely and spongy under your fingers, helps you play like shreddy stuff really easily. Um, it's a pleasure to play really, to be perfectly honest. Well, what do I think? What's my opinion? I think if you, of course, you know, there are so many <laughs> uh, distortion and overdrive pedals out there in the world. It is fair to say that Origin FX do make great overdrive and distortion pedals. Well, they make great pedals. You know, you pay a lot for them, but they're, you know, built to last. They sound really good. The sound quality is great. Build quality is great. And I must admit, these compact series versions are lovely to use. They're really easy to understand and get a great tone from. I think it's definitely worth checking out if you're in a guitar store and you know they stock Origin FX and you have an opportunity to plug one in. It's definitely worth a check for yourself and I would advise trying it into a clean and into a crunch because for me, this pedal works great in the, both those applications. And it's just a case of dialing in using the post uh, drive EQ adjustments to get that exactly where you want it. So I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, I approve of this pedal. I think it's great. I think it sounds really good. I like the way it plays. Um, if you've got the money to get one, then you should check one out for yourself. I think it's probably worth saying that I'll be using this more now that I've heard it and it feels very similar. And again, it's, it's I'll probably put it on the board next to the Revival Drive Compact 
had one for like high gain lead and then one for like my bluesy crunchier stuff um but yeah i like it so i'll put a link in the description box uh, check it out if you're in the market for it also i'll put a link to the revival drive compact as well because they're both fantastic pedals as far as i'm concerned let me know what you think in the comment section below i'd like to say thank you to origin effects for asking me to check this pedal out thank you for watching this video like subscribe and share i've been rabia and i will see you all very soon